Hi, this is Andrea Schmidt with LEAI, and I'm here for part two of a three-part series going over Amazon Quick Sites dashboard, uh, dashboard service that they have. And we are reviewing the same data set that we went through in video one. In video one, it was, was this analysis of store sales, sorry, not store sales, uh, sales, retail sales per region. And again, we're working in a bunch of cities across Texas, and these are each of the different regions. And I took you through this whole analysis looking specifically at region. Now we're gonna shift focus and go to these stores and see if we can find trends and interesting insights in, at the store sales level. Right off the bat, we have this, this time series analysis of sales over time for each of the individual stores, and it looks like a mess. But you can actually see a lot of stuff going on here if you just take a step back and go, okay, so these are all the stores. I'm not about to, you can hover over here and see individual numbers, but that's not the purpose of this visualization. We want to see big trends and insights. Right here, okay, December, December, we have major spikes. Makes complete sense. That's the Christmas season, so we have seasonal fluctuations in many, almost all of our stores and as well as Black Friday around November. Following the rest of the year, we have a rounded trend in February, and you can see that same rounded trend in the previous year over here. A spike occurring in April. This will be your Easter, um, Easter holiday spike. And then over here in the late summer when school starts, you see these spikes that don't really line up. That's, you know, just intuitively thinking schools in different areas all start and stagger their start dates. So you may have, you know, back to school shopping occur at different weeks and different times. And that could be one explanation here. And then from October onward, we have a gradual increase until we, again we hit uh, we hit November and December, which is the major selling season. And it's great to see that, okay, well, something consistent among all of our stores are these, these spikes here at Easter, December, and November. They all line up. Except for this store way here at the bottom, store 33, seems to have almost no seasonal fluctuations to it. So something to look at and something that would be would be interesting and um, you'd want to investigate. Moving down here, we have our top and bottom ranking stores of all time. And that the top stores are going to be store 20, store 4, and store 14, with sales hovering around 300 million. And we have our bottom ranking stores 33, 44, and 5, hovering around 40, 40 million. And that's just your running scorecard all time, what stores are performing best through all of whatever data set or data time series that you have. This is an anomaly detection algorithm and it works behind the scenes. I have it set up to detect anomalies in store sales. And this, this time, or with this specific data set, it detected store 14 was lower than expected, which is interesting because store 14 is also one of the top ranking stores of all time. What I might do now is go through, we'll see if I can select store 14, but it's going to be too hard to find in here. So I'm going to create a filter by store number. I want store 14. Apply that. And this just confirms the anomaly that yes, you can see last year sales hovered around this 2 million mark and now they're clearly on a downward trend. So this could be regional, this could be who knows, a change in strategy that isn't working. Uh, 
this would have to be investigated. Maybe there was some shortage in deliveries. We don't know, but it is an insight that would trigger, okay, I need to look into this further. So let's delete that filter, go back to our original view and continue onward. On the right hand side, I have a ranking of each store's sales performance, but I have it color coded in this top, in this top graph by city. And then below it, I have it color coded by store type. And this is a great way you can look at these together and see, all right, so our top performing store is located in Corpus Christi, but also our bottom performing one is located in Corpus Christi. Furthermore, they're both of equal square footage relatively. I mean, it's in a grouping of square footage. These two stores aren't going to be exact, but it's a large store and this is a large store as well. So I would want to ask what's happening with these two stores. Uh, is it a location issue? Is it, you know, what, why is one store of equal size performing so much better than the other one? Another thing that pops out that you're going to want to see is, is all the outliers. These little orange bars are, I, they make sense, right? You're going to have small, it's store C, which is, you know, the smallest square footage classification. They're going to have fewer sales simply because they have fewer things on the shelves and the less, I guess, less opportunity um, to get the high sales of a, of a very large store. But what are the outliers here? This store is performing best of all the small stores. So is there something the store is doing different? And then with the medium sized stores, this store 10 is outperforming many of the larger stores. So again, these questions to, to ask. If you are leadership, if you are an owner of a business, you're gonna be interested in, you know, why are these two large stores performing bad or poorly? And what cities are they in? Stepping back, it's kind of too many colors to be able to distinguish patterns, but uh, you could see there's this wide distribution of stores in San Antonio. San Antonio has um, a bunch of these medium and small size stores in addition to a very successful large store, two pretty successful large stores. And Fort Worth has this one really well-performing store, but it also has a really poorly performing store as well. So these are the type of insights. Once you look at this, you're going to want to go ahead and ask questions and that will trigger a line of inquiry. I always like to include a pivot table in my visualizations as well, because it is a quick way to say, all right, so we're interested in store 20 or no, what is this store? S store 14, I believe it was the top ranking of all time with lower expected sales. So if you wanted to look into store 14, you just, you could see it right here. Uh, last year it did 100 million, the previous year it did 105, 106, so it was, it was doing good, it was on the upswing. And then in 2012, it's only at 77 million. Now 2012 hasn't finished out its quarter yet, we're still back in October, so Keep that in mind, but it's lower than expected. Then we want to analyze our top movers and bottom movers, both year to date and the previous year. This is interesting. I would want to investigate why, why there are no top movers. Um, and what is the, and I'm not quite sure what the threshold is for QuickSight. I mean, it, it will pick up very small increases. So um, this is, you know, saying there are no top movers when in our regional analysis, you know, we clearly had top movers year to date and previous year. And it picked those up at, you know, 1%, maybe if it's under 1%, it doesn't include it. Let's go back to our store analysis. Our top movers year to date are store 22, 44, and 18 ranging between 12% increase and 7.5% increase. And our bottom movers are store 16, 43, and 36. 
And these two stores have decreased around five to six percent. And this one is 17, which is a lot. Um, I would say that is that's alarming. Maybe if you know a five percent increase or decrease, you may not be concerned, but if it's a 20% decrease, and if this is not consistent with the um, I don't know, with, with if it's not consistent with what's happening in the area overall, I would be concerned that the store is losing 17.5% of its sales year to date. And then our bottom movers from the previous year are 23, 15, and 22. What stands out here is this store 22 decreased 47 percent, 47 and a quarter percent in 2011, but this year to date it is the top mover at with a 12 percent increase. Now that 12 percent increase doesn't doesn't make up for the fact it lost so much business in 2011, but it shows it's on the right track, it's doing the right path, and so whatever changes that they're making we might want to mirror that for some of these other bottom performers. And then we have a scatter plot of sales density versus sales. Each of these dots here is uh, individual store and the size of the dot correlates to its square footage. And this is a nice visual in that it makes complete sense. And we want to see a linear relationship between sales density and sales. And that is because you know we, we know sales density is calculated from sales. So this should be a linear relationship makes perfect sense. But what's interesting is to see again what's going on, what stores are performing at the at the extreme. You know, this is a large of the large stores, it is one of the worst performing, 32, and of the large stores this one is the best performing. But it's also interesting to note that this smaller square footage store is performing pretty well up here with all of the of all these stores these top performing large stores but it's doing so with less square footage and that is store 10 and just out of curiosity there we go that's store 10. But why is it that the same square footage store store 9 is uh, one of the worst performing in its size? Can we go up here and see what is the deal with store nine? Do you see it? Here's nine medium sized store located in Plano. So just something interesting to note. Uh, and then the small stores, what I would be interested in is this guy right here. So store 43 is the best performing small size store and that's gonna be store 43 right here located in San Antonio. And based on this, you would ask, you know, what is the situation? What is the specific market condition in San Antonio to make sales so good? This small store doing so well relative to all of its other, um, all of its other stores as, as far as sales per square foot doing pretty good. And that's it for the um, this is the store sales analysis. I'm going to cut the video here, but I'm going to pick right back up and we're going to start going even deeper and more granular into analyzing each of the individual SKUs. So this is the chart I'll be reviewing in the next video.